Believe it or not, old photographs sell for thousands of dollars every day of the week, and many times they are found in normal people's houses up in the attic at your grandmother's house, your aunt's house. You may find them in an old scrapbook or a family album, and if you find the right one, it could be worth thousands as well. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at some of the most expensive photographs selling right now. Those old photograph snapshots, 8x10s, 4x6s that are found every single day of the week in people's attics, at estate sales, thrift stores, garage sales, flea markets that could turn out to be worth thousands. One of the biggest factors in old photographs is whether it's from the time of first date when it was first photographed by the photographer and printed by the photographer, or is it a later printing from the same negative. In this example here, we have a Marilyn Monroe with an official stamp when she was known as Norma Jean. And it can be something as simple as a small word or name on the back of the image, a company brand, or anything else along that line too. Now these sorts of images can be tied down date-wise by markings on the back and even the type of paper that it was printed on. This one here sold for well over $3,000. Now, age and type of photograph it is does not matter. This is an original Polaroid taken by Andy Warhol of Mick Jagger, and it did sell for thousands of dollars as you see here. Now, photos just like baseball cards and collectibles can be sent in and authenticated. This has a PSA on it. So it's an original, authentic one. And as I said, it is a publicity still used to advertise. It's from Wide World Photos in Chicago. It has multiple stampings on it. It also has the liner notes that you would have used in the newspaper, what you should have texted in it. It's exclusive. It's from his trial. It's authentic to 1931 when this was going around. This was taken by a, a well-known photographer. It was sold to the local newspapers. They stamped it. It was in the warehouse, and now it's being sold after it was authenticated. Al Capone images sell for tons of money. This one sold for over $3,000. Here's an interesting one. This is a very young Buddy Holly and the Crickets. Now, Buddy Holly died in 1959, so we automatically know it's before 1959. He died in a plane crash with the Big Bopper and Richie Valens. Very well known. The day the music died, there's even a song about it. Now, these are said to be autographed as well, which adds to the value if they are authentic. This is also a official Coral Records, which is the record label that Buddy Holly and the Crickets were on, official publicity still. Even if it wasn't autographed, this would have still been worth hundreds, if not again, thousands of dollars. Now here's another interesting one. This is a NASA image from Apollo 17. It's titled The Blue Marble. It was used and published in many different magazines. I do believe National Geographic published an image of this as well. On the back, it also has the government stamping NASA, the release of the image and the whole works, copyright notices, and everything you'd want to know on this one. It was encapsulated by PSA, graded, authenticated, and the whole works. And as you can see, it sold for thousands of dollars also. Now here's a very interesting one. This is a daguerreotype. And a daguerreotype is an image on brass. It's a brass plate that this image is on. This is of a conductor, a train conductor out of Philadelphia. At least the frame on this is marked Philadelphia. It easily sold for over $4,000. The Garrow types go back into the 1840s. They're extremely rare in good condition of any interesting topic or subject matter like this occupational one right here. Now here's another occupational one and this as well is the Garrow type and it's sold for several thousand dollars. Gentleman with the tape measure, it looks like he's measuring this, this gentleman here probably a sailor with the shirt. This would date to the 1840s, 1850s era as well. And it sold, as you can see, for several thousand dollars on its own. And here's yet another daguerreotype of a group of women, maybe a prayer a group or something along that line. Again, this dates to about 1840. This one as well sold for over $4,000.
Now, here's another interesting image here, and I do believe this is the, I guess, prince or king of Siam at the time. It is a spectacular image. It's really a unique one as well, and it's sold for $6,700 plus dollars with multiple bids. Now, the quality of the image, who the image is of, are key factors in it also. So it has to be original from the time the photographer took the image. You don't want a later version, a later copy, a reproduction, or anything else like that. And here's another early image. This is a CDV, a carte de vista, which is just basically a photograph mounted on a small card. This way it could be mounted in an album or carried around with you relatively easily without any risk to it. Now this is an ambassador from China. And what the biggest key factor is on this one, it's by Matthew Brady. Matthew Brady was one of the most famous, well-known photographers during the Civil War time frame and beyond. Most anything by him will sell for a pretty good penny, but something along this line can easily sell for several thousand dollars like you see here. If you're a big Civil War buff, a war buff, a photograph buff, CDV collector, or anything along that line, you should hopefully know who Matthew Brady is. If you don't, I would honestly recommend looking him up. And here's another image of a Chinese diplomat. This is a cabinet card. This would be much larger than the last image we showed you. Now, cabinet cards in general are much larger images than a CDV. It's an original. It's not a copy. This is the real deal identifiable as well and as you can see this sold for almost three thousand US dollars now one of the biggest missed areas and photographs in general for many people out in the real world are real picture real photo postcards some postcards can sell for three four five even ten or fifteen thousand dollars there has been records of some selling for almost a hundred thousand dollars if it's the right type of image. Anything related to tattooing from circa 1910, which is when this is from, carries a tremendous value. This is a very well-known tattooed lady from the circus routes from back in the olden days. And as you can see, it sold again for almost $3,000. Now, one good thing about real photo, real picture postcards like this is it's usually fairly easy to distinguish a modern day reproduction from the old ones as well. So these are usually very solid sellers across the board. Now, one of the biggest areas aside from politicians would be sports related people. This is Josh Gibson from the Homestead Grays. Now this is a type 3 image. There are many different standings or types or impressions of many of these images here. Some were copies, some were copied at specific photographic studios or newspaper agencies and then sent off to another department. The size can dictate it, where the markings are, how it's marked, and the whole works large number of these early style of photos come from news service agencies. Sometimes it may not be original, but it's still from the very same time frame, just a, a copy from that period. Now, sports-related photos like this one here can easily sell for tens of thousands of dollars, like this PSA dna one right here. Now, here is a Hank Aaron image right here from his rookie era. It's a Type 1 original from the 1954 time frame. It is marked. It does have the correct markings apparently on it. It's from a well-known photographer of the day. So many times the name on the back can dictate what's going on with it also. Finding tape or anything stuck to the back is not odd whatsoever and in many cases won't financially hurt the value of the item too bad at all because, again, the image on the face is what's important in something like this. And this one sold for thousands of dollars as well, as you can see. Now, here's a very interesting one. This is Shoeless Joe Jackson, and this is a Type 4 original photo. Now, this is a snapshot. Someone was probably at the field, saw him, took a photo of him, and here we go. This is where it came from. This is as well PSA. Sold for several thousand dollars because of the type of image it is. Chances are this is a one off. This isn't a news uh, manufactured one to send out to hundreds of different newspapers or magazines across the country. This is probably a one off. The, the type of paper that it is, the serrated border, was a fancy style border, usually reserved for you know snapshots and in, in homemade photos like this. And here's a Tris speaker who was from the Boston Red Sox. It's a Type 1 image also. This one is encased. It has some writing, some information on the back as well. Many times the back could be just some scribbles. 
This is from 1910. It sold for thousands of dollars as well. It's a nice, clear image. Sports-related ones right now are the fastest growing, some of the highest priced ones out there that you will find pretty much anywhere. Mickey Mantle. You can't go wrong with a Mickey Mantle also. This is a 62 J's publishing image. So it has information on the back, and if you notice, it's the very same photo buy information as the last photo we just showed you. It has the PSA paperwork for it, letter of authenticity. It is slabbed as well. Now, size-wise, this is an 8x10, but in general, the size itself doesn't matter. In some cases, if a one-off, uh, like a photo snapshot from someone's family album or something, that can be far scarcer than a, a semi-mass-produced photo like this one here. Now, here's a fairly scarce Joe DiMaggio from 1936. Now, the photographer is named on the back. At one point, you could send away or buy actual photographs in 1936 of many of the iconic players of the day. Now, this is a fairly large one at 14 inches tall by 6 inches wide. It's a very fine photo. As you can see, it sold for $5,300 plus dollars. Now, this one here was used for his rookie card, and that explains the size of the image itself. These are some of the scarcest ones out here because people will remember this image from the baseball card itself also. And lastly, here is a Tiger Woods. Now, most people are going to assume that it has to be an old photo to carry some value. A Kobe image would go for some decent value right now. Um, any of these sorts of things can carry a value to the right person. Tiger Woods, obviously he's had some issues as of late. His career has semi been put on hold over several issues going on. He's still a hot commodity. People are still, you know, clamoring for items by him or of him. This one easily sold for several thousand dollars on its own also. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Introducing the Kodak Instant Camera with a twist. Meet the Crank. Can you feel a brand new day? Imagine instant pictures with color. Color. Color by Kodak. Just crank, 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 and in minutes you get bright, colorful instant pictures with a textured satin luxe finish. See your photo dealer and shake hands with the Crank. The Kodak Instant Camera with a twist.